All right, so we're going to do some worked examples. Uh, this is an HSC question that keeps popping up uh, on top of ethanol. Uh, basically, it's one of these find the specific heat released uh, questions. Now, these are these are pretty common. Uh, you might need to do them for all kinds of different things that get heated, but it pops up again and again for ethanol. So now's a good time to learn it. Alright, so we're looking at the apparatus setup that they'll show you. It's got you know, tripod, ethanol, ethanol and a spirit burner over here. That's burning. Uh, it's going to heat up the water. And we've got a thermometer in there to check that. Just a couple things. Uh, this question pops up uh, pretty much every time they ask you to do the maths, which we're going to get into in a second. They're, they're going to say, oh, how could you um, how could you make it more accurate? How could you uh, make it more accurately reflect reflect a true uh, specific heat? Uh, and the problem is that heat's going to get lost. So the two things you can do to change this uh, apparatus setup to make it more efficient is you can add a heat shield uh, in to it, um, and so you can put a heat shield around. And the other thing is you can move the flame closer to the water and have it heating directly, not through a gauze, because that's going to absorb some of the heat, this gauze. So, um, all right, great. So that's the setup, and they're going to give us, uh, I'll give you every time uh, some variables, and then you've got to calculate the specific heat of ethanol from that, which, it, by the way, it might vary a great deal from, the true specific heat of alcohol, it's just based on the student's results that, uh, that they're going to give you here. And then, um, yeah, so, so don't worry if it's a long way from another result or if this result that we get now is, is going to be way off what the true result is or what the result is in other questions you get because it's based on a relatively inaccurate experiment. So in this case, uh, we're just going to get some variables. So it's 200 mils of water. Uh, the initial temperature of the water was 19 degrees. The final temperature was 32 degrees. The initial mass of the burner uh, was 211 grams. And the final mass was 209.6 grams. And the question is going to be uh, find the delta H specific heat per mole of ethanol from from these figures from the students' results. Alright, <clears throat> so there's a few things we've got to find out here, uh, and we kind of, my approach anyway, is to just go ahead and find them out separately. First of all, we can find out the delta H, the total delta H, uh, and then we can go ahead after that and find out the number of moles of ethanol and then we can divide one by the other to get our final full result. So let's do the delta H uh, of the system. So not the delta H of ethanol just now. We're going to look at the, the delta H of the whole system. Um, and then we'll divide it by the moles of ethanol after that. Alright, so the delta H the whole system equals the mass uh, of the thing that got heated up, which is the water, multiplied by C, uh, which is the, uh, like the I think it's called the heat capacity. This is uh, of, the, of the substance, so it's always going to be for water. Uh, every, every substance has a, a certain amount of energy that it will take to heat that substance up by one degree. Uh, so, yeah, in this case, it's uh, one, sorry, how much, how many joules does it take to heat up one gram of water by one degree? Uh, one gram of water being one mil, conveniently. Uh, and, yeah, so that's a number, uh, it's a constant, it's 4.2, uh, you might be given it as 4.18. You should be given this on your fact sheet, so just use whatever's on your fact sheet when you're in the exam. Uh, right, uh, 
to continue. So it's the mass times C, which is that constant, times delta T, so the change in temperature. All right, so let's um, let's just scribble in each of these here. The mass of water is 200 mils. Uh, the C, let's say that we were given 4.2 as the uh, as the as the variable, and the delta T is. Uh, I'll just scroll back up. To no, it's here. So the delta T is the change in temperature. So that's 32 minus 19, which is 13. So it's 200 multiplied by 4.2 multiplied by 13 equals, and we're going to get this answer is going to be in joules, which is joules with a little j. Sorry, with a big j. <laughs> um, uh, and the answer is 10,920. So that's just 200 multiplied by 4.2, multiplied by 13, do that on your calculator, you get 10,920. Alright, or, you know, so that's 10.92 kilojoules. Right. Great, so that's our delta H. Let's do the moles now. We've done the first part. So we've done the first part, the delta H is 10.92. Now we've got to know all right, well, how many moles of ethanol did it take to create that delta H. And then if we divide the two, we can figure out how much uh, delta H a single mole will, uh, will create. So how many moles of ethanol do we have? Well, the first thing is how much ethanol did we use? So what was the, um, was the change in the weight? or just how many grams of ethanol do we have. Um, and so going back to our data points, we started at, uh, well, we started at uh, 211 and we finished with 209.6, so that means minus one from the other is 1.4 grams of ethanol uh, that we used. Now, how many moles is 1.4 grams of ethanol? So 1.4 grams. Now, to figure that out, uh, we have to look at our periodic table of the elements, figure out the molar weight of ethanol, or the molar mass, I think molar mass of ethanol. Um, now, so you look up the periodic table, you find the mass, molar mass of carbon, and you multiply that by 2. Uh, so yeah, let's not forget ethanol is C2H5OH, so that's really just H6O in terms of, it's got six hydrogens and one O. So we multiply the molar mass of carbon by 2, we add that to 6 times the molar mass of hydrogen, it's close enough to 1, uh, multiply by 6 is 6, uh, and 1 times the molar mass of oxygen. Uh, anyway, put it all together, you should get 46.1, uh, which is the molar mass of ethanol. So we've got 1.4 grams of ethanol. The molar mass is 46.1 grams. Let's just go here. So the number of moles of ethanol equals 1.4 divided by 46.1. All right, that equals zero. Point zero three zero three six eight eight. It's a, it's a rounded. All right. So we've got our number of moles uh, just by dividing those together, and now we have to do one final division to get our answer because what we're looking for is the delta H per mole of ethanol. Now we've got the delta H. Uh, and we've got the moles of ethanol, the 
delta H is 10.92, the moles of ethanol is uh, yeah, 0 0.3036. Alright, so then we just divide 10.92 by 0.303688 and we get our answer, which is that it is 359.6 kilojoules per mole. Alright, now, uh, very end, it's uh, it's worth uh, remembering. It's definitely worth remembering because otherwise you'll be marked down. Uh, now this is the amount of energy that has come out of the ethanol when it's been burnt. So, uh, it's the amount of energy that's released, and that means that it's got a negative symbol on it. So, uh, basically. The way of thinking about it is, okay, the water has gotten hotter, so that's gained energy, that's a positive, but what that's confirmed is that the ethanol has lost energy, and so that's why uh, it'll be a negative symbol. An easy way to remember it is that you're almost always going to be calculating this on an exothermic reaction, so an exothermic reaction will always be a negative sign, and an endothermic will be a positive sign. But you're almost always going to be calculated on a negative one. Uh, I haven't seen an HSC question where it asks you to calculate on an endo. It's almost always this um, this setup here uh, that we've got, where you're burning something, and then you're looking at how much it heats it up. So it's always going to be negative. Negative is far more common. An exothermic reaction is negative. Uh, if you do see one with an endo, thermic reaction, uh, then you can think, ah, something's up here, got to do the opposite to what I normally do, but the default should be that it's a, a negative uh, specific molar heat. So that is how you calculate the molar heat of ethanol specifically, and the general principles apply for, um, for other substances that we burn, uh, and uh, hopefully that's helpful.